Hello and welcome to our second part of our voter education series. This is brought to you by the South Shore chapter of Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated and the uh, Brockton Area Branch NAACP. I do wanna let you guys know that uh, myself and the panelists have been tested for COVID and when it came back negative, so for our safety, um, we're going to, uh, for the, for the um, efficiency of talking and being able to be heard, we're gonna take off our masks. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Courtney Henderson and I will be moderating this evening. Today we'll be discussing voter suppression and here with me I have Katrina Huff Larman and Tony Branch. Tony is the principal consultant of Tony Branch Business Solutions, a project management and organizational development consultancy. Prior to that, he served as Administrative Operations Manager for Neuroscience and Oncology at Massachusetts General Hospital. A nationally recognized faith leader and retired pastor, Tony committed his life to community service, bringing the church to the community after the death of Darlene Tiffany Moore in 1988 on Humboldt Avenue in Roxbury. He co-founded CAP Community Action Patrol in Boston Communities of Color, in which he received a non-attorney award from the National Lawyers Guild for teaching the legalities of Boston's police stop and frisk policy to urban youth. Tony retired from full-time pastoring of his Boston church in 2015. Tony has worked tirelessly on issues of food insecurity, youth homelessness, prevention, and affordable housing. Tony is a frequent panelist on these issues while currently serving as the National Ap Apostolic Leader of Revival Nation Chap Chapels of America, a church planting religious and pastoral training organization. Tony presently is a commissioner and chair of the Commission on Diversity for Brockton, vice president and board member of Haitian Community Partners, board member Cape Ver uh, Verdean Association of Brockton, board member of the Massachusetts Alliance Against Predatory Lending, and the vice president of the Brockton NAACP. Tony is elected to the Southeastern Regional Vocational School Committee, a district that encompasses nine south of Boston communities, representing Brockton, Stoughton, Easton, Foxborough, Sharon, East Bridgewater, Mansfield, Norton, and West Bridgewater. He serves as vice chair of the committee and the chair of both the personnel and policy subcommittees and is the past district's assistant treasurer. Tony is the only African-American elected to a regional school committee in the Commonwealth. Tony was a 2019 candidate for mayor of Brockton. Tony is the co-host of Stand Up Strong, WVBF, 1530 AM, and 99.7 FM, I apologize, and producer and host. <laughs> <laughs> Tony is somebody, just keep yes. going. <laughs> go to Katrina, please go to Katrina. <laughs> I'll finish. I'll give you your proper credit. <laughs> and producer and host of the NAACP TV Forum, Brockton Community oh. Access, Xfinity Channel 9. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. This is impressive. Thank you. We'll move on to Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm embarrassed. You shouldn't be embarrassed. I should be embarrassed. I, I feel like I should have wrote more. It's, it's perfectly fine. <laughs> we know you well, Tony. Thank you. <laughs> and welcome. Katrina Huff Larman is currently serving her third term as a town counselor in Randolph, Massachusetts. She serves on the Recreation, Human Service, Small Business, and Economic Development subcommittees. She works closely with the town manager to improve the town's economic growth and social awareness. Counselor Huff Larman is the first woman of color to hold a town counselor seat in Randolph and is the first woman to serve as vice president of the council. Oh. She considers herself the voice for those who are underrepresented and prides herself on developing social and employment opportunities for residents in the town of Randolph. Counselor Huff Larman is also an adjunct professor at Simmons University, Boston University, and Curry College, where she teaches courses on racism and oppression, social policy, urban leadership, and human behavior. She has dedicated her life's work towards social justice and social change. She is the vice president of Suffrage 100 Mass and she works with the board dedicated in educating others about the suffrage movement and women's rights today. Katrina resides with her husband, Frank Larman, and her 15-year-old son, Michael Larman. Welcome, Thank Katrina. <laughs> Both you. impressive people here to, uh, today to talk about voter suppression. Yes, yes. Are you guys? <laughs> We're excited. I'm a little jealous. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and get started. 
Um, this is a topic that was very no. uh, important to me. I did a lot of my research on this in undergrad, and I, I continually work with it. It's voter ID law. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people don't know exactly what voter ID laws are. So I want to talk about that, and then we can go about how it impacts everyone in, in our community. So what are voter ID laws, Tony? So voter ID laws are, is, is an opportunity for those that are, quite frankly, in power, uh, especially in, with all the respect with the conservative movement, to roll back uh, voter mm -hmm. uh, participation in voting here in the United States. One of the clearest examples of uh, how it works in Texas mm -hmm. is that you could have a license to carry a firearm in Texas mm -hmm. and have a student ID. The license to carry the firearm is accepted over the student ID. So young adults are literally removed from the voting process mm -hmm. in Texas. Uh, so these laws, as we know, were designed to keep us from participating. Mm -hmm. We also know that they are targeted specifically to African Americans and Latinx. And when we talk about Latinx, we're talking about brown. Mm -hmm. And part of that is, is because the demographics of the United States is changing dramatically. By 2034, a majority of the United States will be a brown nation. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is no misunderstanding on why this is done. Now, this is what the data shows us. So the data shows us that on average, it would be about $175 uh, in terms of fees, in terms of trying to get these government licenses. The data also suggests that 25% of African Americans don't have access uh, to even some of the documentations that's required, to won't have access because of poverty, to even get these sort of IDs, excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, so what is really going on is that they realize that it would be mm -hmm. an economic impact mm -hmm. on the African American community and the brown community. So basically, voter ID laws, one goal is to reduce our participation in voting here in the United States. And, and that's, yes, absolutely. And just elaborating on that a little bit, um, Voting ID laws were developed to suppress mm. vote, um, voting. So when we talk about um, black and brown people, we talk about the elderly, we talk about the poor, yes. we talk about students. Right. Mm -hmm. We talk right. about these categories of folks that we need. That uh, and, and, and when you look at these students, you know, mm -hmm. we're talking about um, um, Democrats as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. right? right. So this is right. a whole party of individuals who will be suppressed from, from voting because of these voting ID laws. Um, and, and what it said is, the reason why we need these voting ID laws is because of fraud. Right, right. Right? right. Because, right. because, Wait, because right. of fraud. Right. Right. There is little to no evidence right. that, that um, voter ID, having voter, I mean, not having voter ID um, will cause fraudulent um, behavior or, or action. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, yeah. and then and there's yeah, the yeah. other piece, I, 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 was, I was talking to someone the other day who actually agrees with voter ID laws, and they said, but it's also a sense of pride. Oh. Is it a sense of pride to have a voter ID law? <laughs> <laughs> what's your, right, what's right, 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 right. pride from right. a whole different area. We right. do not need a voter ID law, um, laws for a sense of pride. So there's a, so, um, all of these, um, all, all of these methods that put yes. that are being put in place mm -hmm. to keep individuals to from voting because you know there are there are um, when we think about voter ID laws we also need to think about who um, who's able to afford correct mm -hmm. that's that's the point right right who's able to right, afford right, voter right. Um, ID laws and, and and what does that mean right. to the population right. right. Right, right. So I, I, one of the things that I'm glad that you touched on, because in my, when I'm giving s these sort of talks, um, and I have folks that are on the other side of the conversation, mm -hmm. you know, I typically look in data both from the pro progressive movement, the liberal movement, but also from the conservative movement. So mm -hmm. I, I actually pulled the data from the Heritage Foundation. Mm -hmm. So if people that don't know the Heritage Foundation, they're a significant think tank with respect to the conservative movement. They looked at uh, voter fraud. And this is what the Heritage Foundation found out. So there were 1,290 cases of, of voter fraud. Of those cases, those proven cases, of those, 1,113 resulted in criminal convictions, 48 civil penalties, some diversion programs, some judicial findings. My friends, 1,290 cases in America is a drop in the bucket. So what that, the data tells us is that it's really not a serious issue. Uh, so we challenge people that say mm -hmm. that, you know, uh, you need the IDs because of voter fraud. The data, I'm sure the professor will back me up, data people, we look at data sets, the data mining on this does not support a narrative that says 
says that voter IDs are voter ID laws are required because of fraud. I'm sorry. No, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted great. to get that out because <laughs> I hear the same right, argument right, that you've right, been right, hearing. Right. So, right. And, and one of the things that frustrates me uh, us in this movement is that we may have our political philosophy, but I listen to the arguments on the other side, and I was like, well, is there credibility yeah. with yeah, respect yeah, to yeah. that? And then when I look up the data, I'm like, well, your own data shows that that's not true. Right. <laughs> right. That, that, that's actually really uh, alarming to me because right. when I when I was doing research on this, less than fifty percent of the population vote. So is it really a threat? And, right. I, and right. now that you give me these numbers, it, right. it shows that you know this is like like Katrina has mentioned. This is just a way to prevent right. the youth, the the elderly, the Latin X, and African Americans, um, and, and some Democrats from voting. Um, that's but you know, yeah. but uh, let's, uh, let's not forget, so if you look at the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, you, we won't have that here. Mm -hmm. But Texas, North Carolina, or, exactly. or any of the, and I'm not pushing back on, I'm not challenging southern states because my people are southern. My point to you is those communities where we are as people, you are not only endangered, but where we are. So the target is where are African Americans and the Latin X are the majority are the majority mm -hmm. and are really diluting the white power structure, the mm -hmm. white political power structure in those communities. Mm -hmm. They're the states that are being targeted with, with this argument about voter ID laws. Uh, am, am I wrong on that proposal? No, no, yeah, no, yeah. no, absolutely. And, and also just mentioning, that if you listen to this number, there's at least 30 million people who do not have ID. Come on, mm. yes, right? yes. That's like 11% of folks right. who will not be voting. Right. That's a huge number. And so we need to really look at this and, 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 and look at for what it really right. is. Mm -hmm. And what it that's is, what I love with, that's a good point. Is to keep individuals from going into the polls and casting their ballot. Mm -hmm. um, because, and I know we're going to get into the voting rights and everything, but then that's just another piece right. of, right. you know, mm -hmm. how to once again mm -hmm. bring certain populations, and particularly the black and brown populations, take them back, go backwards instead of going forward. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So we touched on voter ID laws. There are other uh, tactics when we, when we talk about voter suppression. So one, uh, another big topic is gerrymandering. Mm -hmm. And I know not a lot of people may know the, the terminology that I'm mm -hmm. using. Mm -hmm. So can you break down, Tony, what is gerrymandering? So gerrymandering, uh, and well, let me give you a little history because mm -hmm. a lot of people actually don't, even know that it actually started here in the Commonwealth. <laughs> so, uh -huh. so Governor Eldridge Jerry uh, developed this uh, formula in order initially in 1812 in order to reduce the number of Federalists, in, in order to reduce the power of the mm -hmm. Federalists back in those particular days. So gerrymandering uh, has been a formula that has been used uh, by all political parties in the United States, not just the Republicans. Uh, and not just the original Southern Democrats, uh, but they've been, it's been used to make sure that, quite frankly, that political parties are diluted. It's, we can talk about the conversation around racism, uh, but that's the, the entire purpose of that. Mm -hmm. uh, so what has happened in places like North Carolina, you know we had a Supreme Court decision mm -hmm. uh, that uh, said that there was, in fact, gerrymandering with the Republicans in North Carolina. It was a Supreme Court rule that they had to do redistricting, mm -hmm. but also, and I know that we don't like to talk about it in Massachusetts, we also had gerrymandering uh, with respect to uh, the uh, Speaker of the House, Thomas Fennerin, who also who did some jail time over this, that there was gerrymandering in terms of the Mm -hmm. uh, uh, figuring out the eight of the ten congressional districts to make sure mm -hmm. that there was not going to be a person of color elected to Congress, and that was in 2011. So there, that. so there, so you remember this. Yes. So there's been gerrymandering across the country in both political parties. Mm -hmm. But the goal of gerrymandering is to make sure that your political party has an upper hand. It's, right, right. And so, easy way to kind of break it down mm. is, is is looking at you know there is how do we do. Uh, how we district that's it certain towns but people don't know cities. how we do but people don't realize that that's done by mm -hmm. senses it's mm -hmm. done by yep, the population yep, yep, yep. and that's what frustrates that's me professionally yes, <laughs> yes so so but people don't understand government so gerrymandering happens okay representation in the congress happens as a result of the census as a result of the numbers that are counted so what happens is is that yes if people get the censuses you get additional representation but what's been happening is is that because of, uh, if you have a state that's Republican, purely Republican, 
There's a lot of numbers in terms of representation, but they want to make sure that that representation goes to people that are like-minded to the Republican Party. I'm sorry. Absolutely. I, no, 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 I no, hope no, I no, make absolutely. sense. No, no, absolutely. I mean, you said exactly what I was going to say. And, you know, you would think that when people, when you are redistricting, yes. when you're districting, right. that mm -hmm. it, it makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. it, and it, it covers certain areas. But, you know, you, a redistricting could be up, across, down, there you up, go. across. Yeah. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. And with, with, so when we think about gerrymandering, we're thinking about people redistricting to benefit a particular party. Right. Yes. And when you, when you, and when you benefit a particular party, that's a guaranteed vote. Mm -hmm. Right. No, you're absolutely right. right. A guaranteed vote. So the Republicans, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. or the Democrats, but I'm going to sit with the Republicans, mm -hmm. um, may, may, um, uh, carve out, you know, uh, a, a district that guarantees certain um, that the vote will happen and the mm -hmm. vote will go their way. Mm -hmm. um, and many people don't, and like you said, too, mm. many people do not do not know this. We don't know that it goes back to these senses, you know. Yep. And let me tell you something. What's interesting about this, and this is why it has been, gerrymandering has happen, have been happening, and this, this whole redistricting thing mm -hmm. has never been in our favor, right? We're pushing it today in 2020. Mm -hmm. But, you know, think before 2020. I think before, back when I was little, yeah. with the senses, and how the lack of trust of those people coming through my neighborhood with yes. their clipboards and, yep. and wanted me to fill out, wanted our family to fill out this information. Mm -hmm. And we didn't feel comfortable with that. So once again, we're not counted. And when we're not counted, we don't get, we don't get the benefits of the money that's coming to the town. Mm -hmm. And when we don't get the money benefits to the town, the redistricting doesn't go in our, in our favor. Right. And, and then that leads to gerrymandering. So one of the things that uh, I didn't realize that both the Republicans and uh, the Democrats have talked about, and, and, I, and I had thought about it, and I was like, it actually makes sense. Mm -hmm. So we could, you could have a Republican, and I wrote my note down when I was looking at their analysis on this. You could have a Republican, but you, can, you could have a Republican that has the same viewpoints as a person that is in the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. yep. And what gerrymandering does, it doesn't even allow that competitiveness. Mm -hmm. It doesn't allow that competitive. It's purely party. And I don't think people realize it's purely party. Mm -hmm. So even if I am, and people know that, you know, I'm a Democrat, but I have some cons fiscal conservative views. Mm -hmm. I, I have some views around uh, we should be allowed to carry our firearms. Uh, so I can have that view in the Democratic Party. That's also the view of many Republicans. But if I'm running in a district, it's not, it's not going to matter that my... A philosophy is associated with those Republicans. I'm not a Republican. Because of so, the party. There because you go. So that's how gerrymandering works. Yep. Mm -hmm. It Absolutely. does not allow a competitive race. Mm -hmm. People need to understand that. You know, if we look at the a district uh, right here, you know, there's a certain district here that covers a small piece of mm. Randolph, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a small piece of Braintree, a large piece of Quincy and which can, is part of Marina Bay. Yes, mm -hmm. yes it is. Who do you think is going to win that vote? See, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? And yeah. it takes off that small piece of, although we know Randolph is a predominantly Democratic um, town. And black. And, and, and black. black. Let's and, be and folks, and folks of color. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. Just the other demographic, well, white Randolph. Mm -hmm. Randolph right, when right. When it comes to voting and interest. Mm -hmm. So your, your power is watered down. Yeah. Yeah. And it's watered down because, again, mm -hmm. Jerry, she's, she, she actually didn't get to this better point. Mm -hmm. Gerrymandering supports incumbency. Mm -hmm. Jerry, yes. <laughs> yes. That actually means... Let's yes. get yes. there. Yes. Gerrymandering yes. supports right. incumbency. So, you know, you call the speaker and you say, yeah, you're breaking this up, but you're going to get... I'm not going to have my job. I'm not mm -hmm. going to have my job. Mm -hmm. um, part of this was when the last time when Governor... In 2000. Yeah. 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 Part of, this is one of the reasons why Barney Frank retired. Mm. We don't want to talk about it. But when mm -hmm. Governor Patrick signed the new redistricting law, Barney Frank, Frank gave up. Mm. I think it was Barney Frank and one other person gave up. Gotcha. So locally, within the Commonwealth, mm -hmm. uh, there are some significant things that have happened. To her point, you could be on the you could have a, a city that's predominantly mm -hmm. uh, a black, people color, like yeah. people of color. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But then you got a dom then you have the dominance mm -hmm. of Quincy. 
somebody running from Randolph. No. Like, you, 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 yeah. Right. So. Well, well, thank you for showing yeah. up. But we we got this. Pretty much. Pretty much. I'm sorry, <laughs> no, you're fine. Like. You guys kind of led into the next question, so I guess we'll just break it down for yep. the viewers, just yep. because they may not have a, a, a breakdown in their own mind yep. of how this really works. Yep. So how might gerrymandering undermine the ideal of a one person, one vote? So break that down. How, what would happen to, that, to, to their vote? She made the point. You're mm -hmm. in, you're yep. in, you're, I, I'm living in Randolph. Mm -hmm. yep. that, uh, my one vote <laughs> and those 10,000 votes over um, in Marina Bay. But, but let's, yeah, mm -hmm. but can, can we just say what we need to say? Mm -hmm. It's intentional. Mm -hmm. It's, 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 mm -hmm. um, it's like we're pretending. Mm -hmm. We become, with all due respect, we become ghosts in the voting process because of the majority of those folks that there can be in the city of Quincy overriding the mm -hmm. will of the voters mm -hmm. of Randolph, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. I mean, can we just, it's, it's yeah. actually that clear. So when you... I know we're going to go talk about the Black Lives Matter stuff. Mm -hmm. So when I'm working with the Black Lives Matter movement and I'm talking to young adults and they say, no, Bishop, we're protesting, we're protesting, protesting, but we're not going to vote. Mm. Because well, they've seen, yeah, wait, I mean, that's a different issue. We're going to okay, get there. Okay, but that's, okay. that's so part of what, yeah, I know, I know. But, that, <laughs> but that's part, they've seen this apathy. Mm -hmm. They've seen the, this, what the professor is talking about, mm -hmm. the question that you're asking, they've seen the, 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 the dilution mm -hmm. of our ability to vote or our, yeah. our, our, for our vote to make a difference. Mm -hmm. An even better example of that is the naming of Nubia Center or Nubia, uh, a Nubia, Square. Nubian Square mm -hmm. in down Dudley in Roxbury. Mm -hmm. The people in the city of Boston said no. The majority of black people said yes. It had to be a mayor that says that we're going to rename it's it. Gonna That's the, the clearest example wow. of how black power mm -hmm. can be diluted or black political power can be diluted by a majority white vote. Mm -hmm. I, I hope this is yep. making sense. No, this makes this sense. This is like elementary. Yep. It's, like, it's actually that clear. Yeah. It but is. You know, I, I just want to step back and the, the, you're making such a good point and a good point that many people do not understand and know. And so even we can say this is one-on-one, -on -one, um, but we are not knowledgeable about how right. the government works. That's the problem. We are not yeah, yeah. knowledgeable yeah, yeah. of how it benefit us or not. That's right. And this is part of the issue of, you remember, I remember we did voter registration. We did. You know, uh, a couple of years in, in last year. And I tell you, when we talk about our youth, and I'm not going to go into it because I know that's not the direction <laughs> we're going in. But when I talk about when I talk to about our, when I talk to the youth, um, there was a certain population of youth who were excited about yes. registering because yep. their yep. mother yep. and their father told them the importance that's it. That's, yeah. of yep. registering to vote. Mm -hmm. And then, unfortunately, there were um, some students, black and brown students, who were excited. And did it, mm -hmm. but I also had to have conversations with them mm -hmm. about the importance of this today. Why is it important today, and why is it going to be important tomorrow? Right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So, yes. I don't know. I'm starting to think this is this is an opinionated question, so you don't have to pull any. Well, you could pull some facts to to you know give some meat to mm -hmm. your your opinion. So with this. But this gerrymandering and redistricting, yeah. would you think that people, because of this, they lack uh, confidence in democracy? Yes. Hmm. I, well, I think that, well, well, well let, we, I'm, I'm careful to say lack, conf lack confidence in democracy. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that because a lot, of our, a lot of our families believe in parts of the government that mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm a little skeptical and say democracy as a whole. Mm -hmm. But I will also say that they definitely, there's definitely an apathy that people say this, and you know that they say this. Bishop, why, vote for what? Why? It doesn't matter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hear it all. It's all on my Facebook. Yeah, they, yeah. That's, they, I, when I'm working so hard, not on voting, but the census, mm -hmm. and I'm glad the professor touched on the census because one of the issues with the census, even in the knocking on the doors, so right now the city, I, I, this, I'm not going to go over to the census, but I want to say, so right now we're at 60% of capturing the families in uh, the city of Brockton. We are way under. I suspect that we're going to be under 90,000 when all of this is done. Mm -hmm. We need to be over 100,000. But people have said to me, Bishop, is not only the fact that I don't have access to the technology, 
is not only COVID-19, but if they knock on my door, I'm not gonna answer it. I'm an immigrant. Uh, my, some of my people in my family are undocumented. I'm not gonna participate. It has nothing to do with you, but your president, your president has said that he's sending ICE out here. So legitimately, Absolutely. legitimately, people Absolutely. are saying the president of the United States has scared them. Yeah. Donald Trump did that. Per Donald, people think he's just crazy and dumb. No, he's doing stuff perfectly. He's scaring people. He's scaring his audience. He's scaring all those that are undocumented. Mm -hmm. He's scaring his audience. Mm -hmm. And he's also supporting that Archie Bunker mm -hmm. sort of mentality Mentality's that yeah. still exists for white men that are over the age of 60. Mm -hmm. We have to be honest in these conversations. So mm -hmm. for me is that it's not a question of democracy, it's more that my vote doesn't matter. And you giving the Quincy model, mm -hmm. and unfortunately we're saying it on TV because people are like, see, that's why we don't vote because of what the president just said. <laughs> 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 no, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta <laughs> turn this around. <laughs> Turn, turn it around. around. But you know what? That's why it's important for us to understand yeah. the government and how right. things work and, and how representation, how, and how representation yes. And, yes. and how could I be part of this redistricting and mm -hmm. so my right. voice will be heard. Right. And as for um, and and thinking about, you know, I don't think it's all about gerrymandering because you know what? Mm -hmm. Many people mm -hmm. don't understand the process, but you know, yeah. it's historical. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, a, it, it's even before Donald Trump. It is. I mean, Donald Trump right now is, is making people feel very uncomfortable. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Make me feel uncomfortable. Absolutely. But we have such a historical history of lack of power mm. and being um, invisible and not recognized and look and belittled and and so when policies and laws were put into place, we were not thought of. Mm -hmm. And because we were not thought of, you know, nothing, we didn't... Why weren't we thought of, anything. Professor? Why weren't we thought of? Well, well we weren't thought of because we were forced <laughs> do, to be here in the do, first do place. Do we want to go there? <laughs> <laughs> well, we have to go there. We're going to talk about the voter act. Right. Uh, we do, yeah. which is, <laughs> which is perfect because we talked about this in our first um, webinar series, mm. and it was about the history of voting yes. in the United States, and yes. it touched on this briefly, and I'm glad that Katrina brought it up when we were discussing the topics because I think we do need to revisit it because it's being constantly revisited here. Right. Mm -hmm. um, the Voting Rights Advancement Act. Why, is, why does it keep coming up? <laughs> because they, <laughs> right, they want to keep taking rights from us. Uh, well, I'm not even going to say keep taking rights because we still are trying to work on right. you know, gaining rights and, right. and, and, and benefits, right? Mm -hmm. So right. we have such a long history of, again, not being recognized, not having opportunities to have human rights. No human rights, right? We go back to even 15th Amendment mm. when, the, you know, black men were supposedly having rights to vote, mm -hmm. right? But then there was that whole struggle of white women, mm -hmm. you know, because white women didn't have, the women didn't have the right to vote, so then you had white women say, well, mm -hmm. right. before a black man have the right to vote in a, a, a certain suffrages, right. I will cut off my left arm, right? Right. So we have those developments of racism and, and discrimination and bias, and then we go all the way up to the 19th Amendment where everyone was supposed to have the right to vote, but black women and black men mm -hmm. did not, still did not have the right to vote because of Jim Crow. Mm -hmm. They were all, you know, But why, but why, but why? Not before the jelly beans. One of the things that would, would frustrate me when we get to the conversation mm -hmm. is people don't realize when we looked at the 15th, when during Reconstruction, mm -hmm. black people started <laughs> businesses, mm -hmm. yep, 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 yep. It's, it's a myth and it, it's so mind boggling that we don't sell the argument this way. We were coming into our own uh, when black but men. Every time we come into our own, there's, there's, there's a law and policy that happens. And then all the way up until come, today. Until to, well, yes. Yeah, yes. Pipelines today. Yes. Pipeline yes. to prison yes. mm -hmm. is today. I mean, you know, yes. uh, Michelle um, Alexandria did a wonderful mm -hmm. you yes. know, book on it. Um, the New Jim Crow. The New Jim Crow. Yeah, yes. The New Jim yes. Crow. Yes. Was yes. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. So there, there's always a policy that surfaces to keep. Black and brown people mm -hmm. back. I just want our people to be encouraged. And, and the, that's why I sell the argument, or I make the argument this way, that even after slavery, there, there, we began opportunity to build businesses, uh, 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 marriages. We were, we were doing well. But it is at that point that we started doing well that America said no. 
you yep, know, we, yep, we yep. Did, here comes Jim Crow. Yep. So I want, because we're not selling, one of the frustrates me about history is that, I mean, we, we talk about it when we get to, sure, the college level, but it's not talked about in high school. As a matter it's of fact, not. Mayor Sullivan is working on getting African American study as mandatory in Brock, at Brockton High School. So we don't talk about this, but it has always been sold that black people are, have always been undeveloped. We just went from slaves to the civil rights movement, that's not true. Mm -hmm. That's not true. We are business leaders, we're bankers in this country, mm -hmm. but again, there was yep, intentional yep. laws and policies that place. suppressed, that suppressed said, us. Oh, they're, yeah. they're, oh, they're going too far. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're becoming, mm -hmm. you know, human. And so, and, 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 exactly, and, and I think that a, a larger part of the conversation, because I am, I'm elected to the Democrats, the Democrats, a larger part of the conversation you look at the election of, and people don't want to talk about it, but let's talk about Ayanna Presley here in the Commonwealth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first black person in Congress, or elected as a representative to Congress in the 20th century. Yeah. Seriously, even in a democratic Commonwealth, it took that long. So again, the suppression of the so-called black and brown power structure, mm. it's across political parties. And we need to have that conversation. But we need to have that conversation. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, really... we talk about we talk about equality yes. all the time, right? And that, but we equity because when you yes. talk about Ayana and you talk about it was um, um, Capiano, mm -hmm. Michael Capiano, and um, Congresswoman Presley, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, and mm -hmm. people say, well, they have the same thoughts, they have the same policies, oh, and, no, 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 and no. she said. We don't have the same there, policy. No, no, exactly. No, and, and he's been in office, but he was in office for 30 but years. But doesn't that talk about what we talked about earlier? Doesn't that talk about the D? Mm -hmm. yeah. That people don't look at what? They don't look at a competitive race. They right. just they look, look at, at the, the D. So yeah. they, both of them are Democrats. And Ayanna said, she and I are very good friends. Ayanna said, uh-uh. The lens that he sees stuff, it's not the lens that I see. We, <laughs> we have two different lens. Do you remember yeah. that? I do remember yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, what, what is her saying? <laughs> the pain of the people, oh, you know, the, uh, the people closer to the pain. Yes, mm -hmm. people closer, closer to, to the, the pain. pain. That was the difference. Yes, mm -hmm. that was the difference when she said she want people to be with her that's closest to the pain. And so, what what really helped me with this equality and equity piece mm -hmm. is when you talk about um, a, a, a Congresswoman Ayanna mm -hmm. and, and her views. And then you talked about Capiano, and I love Capiano. Yeah, no, but Capiano, a lot of people like Mike. Yeah, 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 a lot of people like Mike. Yeah, he was all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, but, yeah. you know, and, but when he called me, <laughs> yeah. I was like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, uh, I know, he called a lot of people. We were like, ooh. Uh, 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 and they said it, I said it, you have a progressive black, black woman, woman running yes. against you. Yes. And what, what, you asking what I'm gonna do? Right, right, you right. You should do. Mm -hmm. That's the, and so and that's equity. Mm -hmm. right. What do you think you, you should, should do? do? Right. Mm -hmm. That's equity. Right. And so I, I believe that when we you know, sometimes it's not about the D. When you talk about the D, D. right? Sometimes it's not about the, we talk about hitting under the D. Yes. It's racism. Right. 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 Yeah. So it was. So it never. They're both Democrats. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when it came down to it, mm -hmm. it was a white man, a black woman. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and and I heard it. And I heard loud I heard, and clear. I heard it was loud and clear. Talking, mm -hmm. talking about you know the black woman not even knowing her her background, her, her background, her background, yeah, or her or her policies. Mm -hmm. It was just became about race. Mm -hmm. You know. So you like we said earlier, you can have the same political party, mm -hmm. but it's so much more than that. And that's why we need to be educated and, and start to get involved in understanding what does policy and gerrymandering and mm -hmm. all that, what does it mean? Right. Right. So with this Voting Rights Advancement Act, because there are still voter oh, suppression yeah, active, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, <laughs> and we're in, it, but that, but that what you're talking about will help lead to the Black Lives Matter movement, because I think that is a very fast moving movement and I think that it's something worth talking about but to circle back to the Voting Rights Advancement Act because we've talked about mm -hmm. voter ID laws and we, we talked about redistricting and you know all the other thing tactics that are used to keep people from voting how would this um, Advancement Act help reinstate federal oversight of voting laws and um, well the oversight is important so we have mm -hmm. section 5 right yep. so we yep. talk about if we eliminate section 5 then we open ourselves up again for um, the the Voting Rights Act mm -hmm. to be um, 
manipulate it. Mm -hmm. right? Incons and, and inconsistent barriers. There'll be and, barriers. And, and there are barriers. barriers. There are right? barriers is what the big issue and, is. Yeah. And from <clears throat> threats to, yeah, right. to um, you know, implementing dis discriminatory changes, um, appointing restrictions around mm -hmm. changes. Back to, to the jelly beans. Ba back to the jelly beans. Back to the jelly and beans. We, 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 er we <laughs> mentioned that earlier, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, for, and for folks who do not know, Tell it. you know, Tell it. that was a piece that, that was a uh, piece of policy. That was real. Happening. People that don't understand. Real. That was real. Counting mm -hmm. how many jelly beans are in the jar. And how many jelly beans are in this <gasps> In America. Jar. That yeah. happened in America. You mm -hmm. could vote once you tell me how many jelly beans are in this jar that's this big mm -hmm. and, and, and this wide. Yeah. So again, mm -hmm. something to keep individuals from voting. So mm -hmm. what we need is to continue to have protection mm -hmm. for the Voting Rights Act so, pe so we don't go backwards. Right. Mm -hmm. Because we cannot change the act without supposedly without the supreme justice. Yep. Right, right. Right. So, but that and that's for somebody filing a, a, a suit, uh, yep. and that it gets through the federal judiciary. What has happened with the what we're going to try to rename the John Lewis Voting Rights mm -hmm. uh, Advancement Act? Right. What has happened basically is that there hasn't been an equilibrium with respect to both state and municipal laws on voting. So what we're trying to do is now that they have a federal law that says it straightens that out. But people really, again, back to the jealous beans. So in 1965, when Lyndon Johnson signed the law, what mm -hmm. people don't realize, I think there was only six black people in the United States Congress, no, no mm -hmm. senators. Mm -hmm. But by 1971, this is really going to kill people. We were only up to 13 and one senator, and that was Ed Brooks here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. So even with these changes in these laws, there still has seemed to be a consistent pattern mm -hmm. of us not grabbing these offices, mm -hmm. i.e. us going, you know, fast forwarding to Ayana here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. But with that said, we need to stop this process of lawsuits. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what the NAACP, the Urban yep. League, uh, all these organizations, we have to sue in order to have the Voting Rights Act enforced and enforced legally. Mm -hmm. Because of gerrymandering allowed things to happen, mm -hmm. voter suppression laws allowing the things happening. I mean, there's a lot of things happening, and people realize that because what? Because their majority, the majority of the, the, the electors are carrying on this philosophy, mm -hmm. uh, we don't need the blacks and the Latinx to vote. Mm -hmm. And they enact, they enact mm -hmm. those voter suppression laws. So you need this federal act to overrule the state. I hope I made sense. I know that might be no, a no, it, it I hope that makes sense. sense yes. But let's add, too, because it wasn't until 1974, 75, oh. right, when it was, there was a, a change in the uh, Voter Rights Act about language. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, yeah. So we still, yes, you yes, know, yeah. And, I forgot about that. You know, yeah. so oh. w it was still um, discriminatory to uh, individuals who did not spend, who did not speak English. And why did that happen, Professor? Again, because we talked about this. Yep. Mm -hmm. The change in the demographic, the yep. de change in demographic. Remember, change in demographics uh, causes people to go a little bit crazy. So people have seen the change in demographics. So what do we do when we're browning? We keep them from voting, and because, what do you yep, do? Yep, the yep. language barrier. I, yep, the, I call yep. it. The, I actually call it the language tax, because that's exactly what that is in terms of uh, preventing right. folks of maybe Spanish speaking or whatever be able yep, to vote. Absolutely, absolutely. Because the Asian community, yep. Spanish speaking, yes. um, yep. the indigenous community, you know, all did not have. Um, these right. rights mm -hmm. and you know and the jelly beans we talked about the jelly oh. beans but let's not forget the poll um, the poll tax yes let's the not literacy test yes. the literacy, literacy. Li yep. yes right um, and let's not forget the abuse yes. the mm -hmm. physical the yes. mental you know there was a, yeah when I say our history is so it has so much horrific and violence and violence yes. in it um, however I, I don't forget that it does, but this is why today it is so important for us to do what we are doing, for us to have these yes. conversations. Yes. For, and thank you for inviting yes. us yes. here. Yes, beautiful. Because, awesome. You know, this is what's needed to, mm -hmm. to educate ourselves, educate the community, mm -hmm. so we can go forward um, and learn from our history, not run from our history, mm -hmm. but learn from our histories and know the shoulders that we stand and, on. And it, 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 what's so ironic about the shoulders that we stand on, I think for a, a large part of us, 
And I think it's only been like in the last two years that we began the process. You know, John Lewis, yes. Congressman Lewis, mm -hmm. pancreatic cancer, knows that he was dying. He really, really started laying out his legacy. God bless his soul. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think that when you look at what Congressman Lewis has said, I had my skull cracked in, mm -hmm. rested 40 times, bitten by dogs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And y'all can't vote? Really? Right, right. Can we talk about it for real? Right. Yeah. So when I talk right, right. to the Black Lives Matter movement activists, mm -hmm. they're saying, well, we're, we're part of this, we're kind of Marxist on this stuff. I'm like, what are you talking about? You gotta vote, you have to vote. Mm -hmm. And when I give an example of one of our own, mm -hmm. this, uh, listen, this is not people looking at, um, uh, what is it, uh, when we watch Channel 2, public TV, mm -hmm. and you see all PBS. the old pictures of Dr. King and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and John Lewis when he was 22 years old mm -hmm. uh, at the it's Washington right Moment. It's, it's right, right, right now. now. Yes. You had a it's living right person, mm -hmm. a living soul that talked to you about this. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I'm frustrated because I know you... you, you I'm, you, always, you, I'm always yeah. frustrated yeah. over this. Because there's pain associated to this process. Yes. Am, I, am I making sense? Yeah. yeah. And it looks like history is repeating itself. Yes. Absolutely. And um, Absolutely. I just wish that people were... And this is... Thank you for coming. But this is why we decided to do this webinar series. Thank you all. So that people thank know you, that... Yeah. yeah, that we... We're still fighting, and we're not we're not done fighting yet. But we do need to vote. I think that it's it's a joint movement where you need to vote, but then also bring awareness and hold these elected officials accountable. Mm -hmm. Which brings us to the Black Lives Matter um, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. movement. What is what is what really is the movement? Is it effective? What what, what do, what's your so, opinion on that? I'm okay. So we all know that. The Black Lives Matter movement came out of the, the first arrest in New York where the gentleman said, I, could, I cannot breathe, I cannot breathe, okay. The police, you know, did what they did. They choked him to death, et cetera, et cetera. The daughter had a very, I'm sorry if the name is escaping right now. The daughter had a, and she ended up dying yes. over, because of, of the stress of her losing her father and advocating against these sort of chokeholds. Mm -hmm. But one of the things is, is so the Black Lives Matter movement has, been, has really been successful in recent, in recent events because of George Floyd. Yes. And it has brought the attention that our lives need to matter. Now, what people don't understand, and I know that I'm going to get some nasty messages about this, there's the Black Lives Matter movement as a tag, Black Lives Matter, her Black Lives Matter, her Black, my Black Lives Matter, we should matter, we should do stuff about that, and there's the Black Lives Matter movement as an organization. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the Black Lives Matter movement as an organization is what people have now become concerned about because they looked at their charter. And one of the things that we have to do as people of color, oh Lord mm -hmm. have me, if you forgive me for saying this, that we need to be careful even with who we associate ourselves with. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not talking about anybody Marxist politics. I'm not talking about people's uh, history or what they've done behind closed doors. But what I am talking about, any discussion around anarchy against the United States government is inconsistent with the civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you that because I'm a civil rights leader. So when I hear people say that, you know, we're going to throw a rock at the police or we're going to throw, and I'm, I'm sorry, but and, I need that, to be. And that's not Black Lives Matter, that, to throw a rock, to destroy well, property. Well, wait a minute, let me get there. So well, that's, not, that's not a part of their movement, but I do know for a fact activists have said that they have people, people that have promoted that it is a part of the movement and those people that are becoming the most vocalists. I'm telling what I know for a fact. So they're saying that, yeah, we broke, the, we broke the window, we broke the glass, and one of the Black Lives Matter leaders in Chicago said, when they broke the glass at that Walgreens, this has been all the news, he said, that's, that, I mean, that's a part, we gotta show them, we gotta show them. And besides, it's Wait. covered by the insurance. So my point to you is this, mm -hmm. Professor, Yes, I'm, I've been out giving conversations on Black Lives Matter. Everybody knows I've been doing a lot of speeches. I've been invited to a lot of events to keynote Black Lives Matter. But I must say that we need to be very, very careful that what's going to get the most press, the most coverage, is the negative. This is why we know as civil right. rights leader, it was a what? Nonviolent. I'm going to get to where I'm getting to. A nonviolent <laughs> movement. Nonviolent. Why did we say nonviolence? Because we knew that we could not have anarchy. We knew that we couldn't. So John Lewis and Dr. King had thrown a rock back, a rock back at the cops. And if John Lewis and Dr. King and, and Reverend Jesse Jackson, all the Ralph, Ralph Apony had said, okay, let's kick the dogs. 
there would have been no civil rights movement in the United States of America. So what I've been trying to train these young people who say, no, Bishop, we got to fight back. We got to be a little bit more militant. We're going to fight them back. Because if we fight them back, they're going to know that we're, we're going to stand our ground. It's not, that's not a philosophy that's going to be a long-term philosophy mm -hmm. that's going to uh, uh, have the Black Lives Matter movement be successful. Mm -hmm. but let me, but let's I'm let's sorry, Professor. Go ahead. That's okay, because we also have to think about historically, we, we did have both type of behaviors as well. Mm -hmm. we, we had the nonviolent. But non -violent, which one, what, 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 which and one we, won? And we had the non, <laughs> wait, but, you know, we, we had the nonviolent. We, we did. We have that, we're going to push back. Yes. We're going to make sure that we are seen. Define pushback. Um, Is that rocks? We, we, we don't want, we want people to be, <laughs> we want people to see us and we yes. no longer want to be in, um, right, right, seen right. as individuals. And yes, sometimes it was about rocks. Rocks. <laughs> sometimes it was about yeah. rocks. Yeah. Uh, but the Black Lives movement should be and is supposed to be about again black lives mattering right and and how do we how do we look at that yeah. that my, as a black woman yeah. you know my i matter mm -hmm. so this whole thing blue lives matter and black oh lives they don't there's matter, no such thing as that you yeah. know yeah. you know it, it's yeah. not yeah. about a competition right it's about i matter too stop looking through me right and look at me, know who I am, put policies in place that affect me, put mm -hmm. policies in place that will help me be more successful, that will help my children be more successful, that will help our community be more successful. Well, is it the question, why, why do your children, why should your children matter to me? Well, let me, let me, let me, well, yeah, you, you, because one of the, the conversations that I've had, mm -hmm. and I'm, I've been, you know, debating this for a long time, so when they came out with White Lives Matter, all right. Well, your children matter to me, then. right? So, <laughs> so are we go somewhere with this. So we, so we, we, oh, you got a good panel tonight. <laughs> so, I do. So when, we, so when people talk about White Lives Matter, what we're saying, we're not saying we're not dismissing as a Black Lives Matter leader. I'm not saying dismissing White Lives. What no, I'm no, saying, no, no. No, what no, I'm no. saying is that I'm showing you data all the way back from 1983 and beyond that state-sponsored violence is real in police departments across the country. Absolutely. And and, Absolutely. and, and people say, well, no, those are the old-time cops. No, because no, we have 25-year-old cops. Cop. Yeah, we have 25-year-old cops that are using N-words, that are beating people. You should see my Facebook page. But, but yeah, so this is, this is, this is law because enforcement. Because it's about practices. Yes. It's about yes. practices and culture of an institution yes. that continues to, to breed behavior so I don't care if you're on the force and you're 20 years old or it if you're doesn't on matter. the force and you're, you're mm -hmm. 60 years old. It's the culture within an institution that would breed certain type of behavior. Right. So that's what we're asking. Let's change these behaviors so everyone's lives will matter. So you will see me. So you will see some of the um, behaviors that, are, that you are presenting. Um, from this institution are not fair. fair. It's Sh not about equity and it's not about equality. It's, a, it's only about power and control. Tell, talk I, to me though. Talk to me about Black Lives Matter. So Black Lives Matter but, starts because of state-sponsored violence. But talk, because you're, you're in academia. Tell us about, because I don't know, tell us about will this movement truly be able to uh, remove I, systemic I, racism, you know, structural racism? No, I think will it work? I think this movement has to you know, it's hard because it's not only Black Lives Movement that yeah. has been surfaced, right, right? right? And all of a sudden, this is the first movement. Right. We've had so many movements before, before right. the Black Lives Mike, Movement. Mike Curry says that all the right. time, yeah. that this is not new. And, and this is it's not, not new, new to yeah, us. Yeah, this yeah. is not new to us. Yeah. And so, but what we hope is that, you know, I've received phone calls for the first time that said, Katrina, I see you. Ah. I was like, oh, you see me? And I, personally, as a black woman, don't know how to respond to it. I'm right. like, mm -hmm. okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, like, yesterday you didn't see me. But what I've been really pushing is I am tired of these organizations and institutions coming out with these letters and these statements. The tag. Talking about the tag. Black Lives, lives Matter. Matter. Right. And I'm pushing back. And I said, so what right. does that mean to you? Right. What are you going to actually do? to show that black lives matter. Mm -hmm. Are you changing your policies? Are you talking about diversity? Are you talking about inclusion? Are you hiring more folks of mm -hmm. color? Right. Are you putting your money into the black community? Black lives matter is more than just saying- A tag. More, right. 
uh, want to say black lives yeah, matter right. it's about where are you putting your resources mm -hmm. so black individuals could benefit mm -hmm. from those resources because we do not have them right. and i've been having this conversation over and over and as for the mm -hmm. youth you're right you know and talking to the youth about this you know it's and it's the same conversations with the youth it's not about throwing a rock through a, a store window it's not about the violence it's about progression mm -hmm. and what are we what are you going to do in order for us to continue to so we can rise to the top and we can start to understand how to put policies in place so people understand putting policies in place will only push us further and help us um and, and, and gain more benefits and resources and opportunities. Mm -hmm. Is there a Gandhi movement? Is there a possible? Is, yeah, I, I gotta ask. Is there is there a possibility for us to have a Gandhi movement we, and Black Lives Matter? I really. I, well, this is what I'm thinking about. That I'm thinking about. We cannot look for an individual. Okay. There is okay. not a Gandhi. Yeah. There is not a Martin Luther King. Yep. There is not a Malcolm X. We together. We are the leaders. We are yep. the leaders yep. collectively. We need to come together and work together. Are you we dismissing need... that philosophy, though? I'm not dismissing it because yep. I think it's worthy. Okay. I think it's very worthy, and I think it, it could definitely provide lots of guidance. Mm -hmm. But we can't just look for that. You know, everyone's sitting down talking about, I'm so, waiting for someone to come and sweep me up well, and, I mean, so I can follow them across someone. No, we all going to lock up. But hasn't that been our problem with black people, though, that we've looked for a, a singular leader? Mm -hmm. We've looked for a Dr. Mm -hmm. King. We've it looked for yeah. a Malcolm X. Hasn't yeah. that really been our problem? Really, I mean. And, that, <laughs> and that, that was the problem. I mean, when MLK was assassinated, he never... Uh, he never trained someone up, so right. we, we, I think we can't look for a messiah. No. I think we, I think we are. Right. We right. do. I agree. So what ways can we get young, younger adults to vote? So they, they're protesting. They're, they're, we've, I see a whole bunch of Black Lives Matter yeah. murals all yeah. across Boston. Yeah. I think that's great, I, uh, but I personally don't think that it's enough. I think we have to couple protesting with voting. Mm -hmm. How do we how do we get vote how do we get the younger people to vote? Well, 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 but that goes back to what I said ten minutes yes. ago. The Black Lives Matter. There's a Black Lives Matter organization. There's the Black yes. Mag, the Black Lives Matter. You and I saying it as mm -hmm. a as a, uh, a philosophy. Mm -hmm. uh, so the real question is is that. Are we going to rely on the Black Lives Matter organization to promote, use their fiscal? You know, they, I think they they received now up to thirty million dollars. Mm -hmm. People literally started do donating the money, and then they said, "Wait a minute, what's what does their what does their bylaws and stuff say?" Now mm -hmm. some of the money stopped. So the real question is, is that are people going to risk it? Professor, know what I'm talking. So the real question is, is that are people are we going to rely on them to send out that message, or are we going to rely on the traditional avenue of the NAACP, the Urban League, these great uh, 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 organizations like Capital City? Are we going to rely on? That's really the question because there is no singular leader. We need to leader. pull all resources. Mm -hmm. We need to bring right. all resources to the table. How do we get them right to believe, now, Professor? But, but let's, well, you know. They're, they're, <laughs> There's so many different layers. I mean, one in particular layer that, that I'm still battling with is when you talk about the younger generation mm -hmm. and they're saying they're not voting. And I'm like, well, why are you not voting? Well, because Bernie. I was like, listen. Yeah, that's the other one I've been hearing. Yeah, oh, uh, yeah. Like, listen, A, Bernie needs to make a statement. Bernie's their messiah, though. Be, let's be honest. Yeah, well, It's yeah. the messiah complex. So Bernie, we had our king. A lot of them have their, their Bernie, Bernie. Hated Hillary. I mean, but Bernie's not on the stage. I know, so, I know. So you need to forget about Bernie. I know, I respect but... Bernie. I mean, and let's not forget, Bernie was a millionaire, is a millionaire too. And they don't talk about that. Right? Though. Yeah, no, no. No I'm one not, wants to talk about Bernie talk being about a millionaire. Yeah, Bernie's right. a millionaire, right? So there was only one person on that stage that was not a millionaire. They all were. Oh, right. they, all of them were. So anyway, uh, we need for people to say, okay, I follow this man, but this man is no longer on the stage and now I need to make some decisions because that's how we got Trump into office because people said well I don't like either one so well some people I don't so I'm just not going to vote no we can't afford we cannot afford not to vote mm -hmm. we need to make some decisions and that that's part one part two is all the or the NAACP the Sigma Gamma Rose the Delta Sigma Theta mm -hmm. the AKAs mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. Urban League we all need to come together. And there are some, I'm going to talk about one initiative before we leave, that is doing that, bringing the organizations to get together. So um, Senator um, Harris, who was just, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. nominated as the, the VP on the Biden ticket, mm -hmm. you know, that's real. 
Mm -hmm. And so how are we as a community going to come together and make this happen? We cannot sit back. We cannot wait for a leader. We right. are all leaders. We need to come together all, and use our resources and collaborate. Mm -hmm. Collaboration is how we're going to make this happen. We can't mm -hmm. wait for one person. What's the argument? So when I spoke, spoke to Black Lives, some of the Black Lives leaders uh, in the Boston area yesterday, your Biden chooses uh, Harris, Bishop, we still have a problem. I says, what's your problem? Criminal justice, yeah. mm -hmm. criminal justice mm -hmm. reform. She's not, she's not our friend. She, she's a, and I said to her, I said, but she was a prosecutor. She was, she was talking. <laughs> you know, I, I, and, 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 you, know you, you literally have these conversations where people's light bulb goes off. You guys do understand that she's elected as a district attorney, attorney general. Her job was to prosecute those that have been arrested. So that was her job. And when you try to get them to, that like to go off in that vein, mm -hmm. it's said, no, but she could have done better. I said, yeah, but she did do better. If you look at some of the work that she did, especially around some of uh, black women that she didn't want to prosecute, she did do work. She did have programs, that, that system program in California. Then they become like, oh, maybe maybe so. But that's the general thing. The general yeah, theme well, is, right. the general, the general theme right. is, is that, nope, she was a prosecutor. Right. We can't support Biden now. Mm -hmm. And I, so this is what I've been telling young people that I'm gonna tell you, your, your audience today. Mm -hmm. We elected Donald Trump, and people go like, we're going to get you, Bishop, when you leave this, this, <laughs> this panel. No, we elected Donald Trump. Anybody that did not vote did elected not Donald vote. Absolutely. Trump. Yep. Absolutely. It's that simple. Absolutely. If you didn't vote, you, you elected, elected Donald, Donald Trump. Trump. Yep. Yep. If you don't come out this time, no matter where you are on the political spectrum, you, elected you, are, Donald you, Trump. you elect Donald Trump. And this is what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. He's already sent in the federal police in, to Oregon. Yep. Uh, so, and I suspect if he's elected for another four years, we'll see a worsening of law enforcement. We'll see a lot more what we call state-sponsored violence. Mm -hmm. So people really need to be concerned about gun, gun. So when Obama got elected, they showed, the FBI shows the statistics of whites that purchased firearms and were getting licenses to carry. Now, now during this season, are you, mm -hmm. do you guys realize how many African American and other blacks and minorities in this country? I hate the, that word minorities, but do you know how many of the gun? Now we're buying all the guns to yeah. get licenses to carry because yes. people are getting yes. bold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's people on the other side that are getting pretty bold. <laughs> so right, no, no, that's that's a huge thing. It is. But I don't know. Again, my point to, to 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 both of you all is that I'm still hearing from people that are very vocal, mm -hmm. and some of the They've people that I voting. speak, they they they're not voting. Mm -hmm. I'm not just talking about the people that you. They're not voting, and they're not going to encourage. And I, and I said to you, I understand that voting is your voice. Yes. Voting is your voice. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, after the protest, we're looking for programs. You get your programs by electing people that may, may look like you, may not look like you, but you should be electing people that represent your interests. I hope right. that's making any sense. That makes sense. So really quickly, just for the sake of time, how can people vote by mail? Because it looks like that's, uh, that's going to be well, the you, thing. Well, yeah, well, voting by mail, um, oh. that, yeah, that's going to that's definitely going to be the thing. Everyone should at well. this point, well, at, by um, like two weeks ago or a week and a half. Should have gotten your ballot. Should have mm -hmm. gotten your ballot. Okay. So there's a three-step process. Okay. You get your ballot, you send it in, and then they mail you, no, not your ballot, you get a card. Yeah. I, I meant to bring the card too. I wanted to bring my card. Mm -hmm. You get your card. Card first. Right? Yeah. You, you mail it in, and then they mail you a ballot, and then you mail your ballot. Okay. And you can either mail your ballot or bring your ballot to town or city hall mm -hmm. and, and hand it in. Now, absentee um, ballots for clerk, um, oh, but that's in person. I don't want to do the in, to, in person. I want to um, just talk about the step one, step two, and step mm -hmm. three. Um, you can still vote in person, though. Okay. You can still vote in yep. person. Um, ab ab absentee ballots, um, August 3rd to August 31st. Early voting, August 22nd to August 28th, and the primary is September 1st. Yes. So definitely vote by mail. There's a lot vote by of mail, initiative. Professor, the vote by mail when? Now. Yes. yes. Send your ballot in now. Yes. yes. So yes. what people, that, and I didn't mean to cut you off, but no, no, it's no, very no. important. So what's happening now is that the United States Postal Service has already sent out a warning to the governors that they are, to the secretaries of state, excuse me, I was wrong on that. They've already sent out a warning. This has already been released. This is public information that they may not be able to meet certain deadlines of the states. One of those states, guess which state 
the Commonwealth of Massachusetts is one of those states mm -hmm. where the post office says that it may not be able to get those ballots on time by the deadline. So if you have your ballot, send it in now. The other piece of this conversation is, is that the election is very important. The executive branch controls the semi-public organization called the United States Postal Service. The executive branch has directed the postmaster general to begin the process of removing mailboxes. Okay. CNN released that already, so mo mailboxes are being re uh, are being removed. So a lot is going on. Voter there's suppression is real. It's real. Mm -hmm. it's real. We're talking about voter suppression, but also know there's a lot of initiatives out there. There's yeah. a state, the Safe Election Network, the yes. CNN was nonpartisan, but they're doing a, a number of programming and ho and hoping to educate people around the um, vote by mail because people do not know the steps about vote by mail. They're doing virtual town halls, phone banking, and forcing, uh, looking for poll workers because most poll workers were um, elderly. Mm -hmm. Right. So now the el elderly are home. And, and you get paid. Were, you get paid. And you get paid. You get paid. paid. Brock is looking for poll yeah, workers. Yes, yes. And, okay. and Randolph is too. Yeah. <laughs> but the other very important piece of this, which the, what they are pushing, they're looking for poll monitors. Mm -hmm. Want to make sure that if people go no hanky panky. To, mm -hmm. If people go into the polls, that the votes, I mean, everything is done right. And then there's Correct. this other initiative called the 1619 Project, which I was just um, informed of um, a couple of days ago by the Urban League, 1619 mm -hmm. is when our ancestors were brought over mm -hmm. here. And it's um, so they are also bringing what we talked about earlier, all these organizations together so we could make sure that vote by <coughs> mail is done right and that people do what they're supposed to do at the polls. Mm -hmm. Well, guys, <laughs> that's a lot of information. Yes. I hope everyone has let that simmered in. I want to thank you two for for coming this is, in. Thank this you was for a lot of fun. I, I thank love you for this. for having us. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. Yes. Um, I do want to let everyone know that we do have a third part of the series. Oh, it will okay. be on uh, representation on a local and federal level. So I hope that you all tune in um, next month on that. Um, and I will say good night to you all. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, mm -hmm. thank you Professor. Yes. And thank you, greater service, greater progress. Thanks yeah, to sorority. Yeah. The president, <laughs> she's here, but she don't want to come on camera. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been well. Thank you so yes. much, and God bless our community. Thank you.